Okay, this sermon is entitled, False Prophets. Are they unsaved or just mixed up? I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 103 reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now the million dollar question is, are all false prophets lost? Or is it possible that some are saved and they're just mixed up? And if we turn over to Acts chapter 15, we see that in biblical times of yore, that the, the Pharisees of this particular sect were actually saved, but they were teaching false. They were adding Mosaic law practice to the gospel, and they were adding circumcision. So let's take a look at these verses. It reads in verse 1, And certain men, which came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had, you know, had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Jump down to verse 5 and it reads, But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to, to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the Bible says right there they believed. And in John 3.15 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Anyone who believes on Christ is saved. But in this case we had some people that were bringing in, you know, a work salvation. These Judaizers, these Pharisees. And Paul and Barnabas, they clear the whole, the whole matter up in verses 9 through 11. And it reads, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. What he's saying is that there's no difference between sinners. We're all sinners. We're all alike. And we all need to be saved the same way, and that's by faith. It goes on in verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of, of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. The conclusion of the whole matter is that everyone is saved the same way. Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, it's all by grace, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So these... Um, a miss Pharisees were corrected here. Now, I've comprised a list of different points here that are indicative that a false prophet is, is in fact lost, completely unsaved, and in some cases, reprobates. So I'd like to go down this list and basically explain why I believe they're lost as opposed to just being mixed up. But first, let's turn over to John chapter 10. My first point is that they don't hear the voice of the shepherd. An unsaved false prophet doesn't hear the voice of the shepherd. When you show him clear scriptures of salvation and they just don't see it, it's because they're not saved. We see this in verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay, I've dealt with people before that were mixed up on the gospel and I showed them a simple salvation verse and they were, were actually relieved and they did not become real resistant, touchy about it. They just believed it. But see, an unsaved false prophet will not believe it. They won't hear the voice of the shepherd. So that's my first point. My second point is that they resist it and they continue on in, the, in their false teaching. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we see an example of this. Now, like I said, if a person was actually saved and they're teaching wrong and then you show them the correct gospel, they should relinquish their falsehood and then repent, and then, then go on and preach the correct gospel. But see, this is not going to happen with an unsaved false prophet. 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's take a look at verses 7 and 8, and it reads, Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, now as, Jan, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. The second point is that they just they resist it, not only do they not hear it, they resist it, you know, completely, you know, volitionally, and then they go on and they keep preaching false. My third point is that they love their false teaching. That's a sign they're not saved, is when they call eternal security the doctrine of devils, or faith alone is, is demonic, and they, they call each other names. Or, they, or if you're preaching the true gospel, they'll call it a false gospel. That's a sign that they're a reprobate. 
They love their teaching. They have a penchant for error. Okay? My fourth and final point, or indicative point on this list is that they get worse and worse. Like, for instance, let's say they start off preaching that you, could, you have to repent of your sins. A year later, they're preaching sinless perfectionism. They just get worse and worse. That's a sign that they're a reprobate. That's a sign that they're unregenerate, unsaved. And we see this in the same chapter in verse 13 reads, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So that's pretty much all I have. The real question is, what do we do with false prophets? Well, number one, we regard them as unsaved. If a person's preaching a false gospel, we have to assume that that's what they've always believed because what does it take to become a false prophet? It takes a complete rejection and repudiation of the true gospel. And I'm not going to believe that a person used to believe it if they're preaching it wrong, you know, consistently and incessantly. So number one, we regard them as unsaved. Number two, we mark and avoid them like Paul said in Romans. And number three, we preach the real gospel so that they can get saved. And, may, and then hopefully by the grace of God, they'll preach the correct gospel hereafter. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.